give everybody a chance to settle down. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Today, tomorrow, and forever. May we enter into a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you for another day that you woke us up. We may be have, we may have concerns, but we know we, we are in your hands. And we are in good care. For you say you will never leave us or forsake us. So if we do get apart from you, it's because we walked away, not because you walked away from us. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this holiday weekend, dear Lord, that uh, some have celebrated, some have given thought to. But no matter what the case may be, dear Lord, you are here with us. We thank you for this Sunday that we come in to the house of the Lord, where this by by presence or uh, over the internet, thank you for that opportunity to spread the word even more globally. Um, that your word will be will go out and be uh, heard by many, many more than than probably we would even know. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that, dear Lord. We ask you to continue to feed our pastor yes. so that when he, when he comes to us with the word that you've given him. That you won't just stop at what you gave him before he got here. You'll continue to feed him as he gives us the word. Yeah. We ask you to bless us with the word, dear Lord, so we'll see how it pertains to us so we can, can pass it on to somebody else, dear Lord, so they will be also enriched by what the word of God says. We ask you to bless this Sunday and be with us as we go through this worship experience. These and other blessings bless you, your son, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. We want to uh, praise God for that prayer. We want to continue in the mode of prayer. Uh, we want to continue praying for those who are sick and shut in, uh, particularly in our church family. Nelson was hospitalized. Uh, I can't remember if he's or he's still hospitalized. Yeah, he's leaving tomorrow, but he's going for rehab. Rehab. Yes, that's right. He's going for rehab. And uh, Sister Latanya Davis's mother uh, was hospitalized, but taken back to the nursing home. In that nursing home, they found some of the workers had tested positive for the virus. Mm -hmm. So they tested everyone and she was one of the ones tested positive. So she is, to my knowledge, the only of our members who have tested positive for the coronavirus. I want to pray for her and keep her in our prayers. Uh, she's fighting to keep her spirits up and, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. And so we definitely want to continue praying. And then all uh, that we are aware of, if you just want to call a name out of someone, feel free to do so at this time. Bow our heads now where we are and just pray for every name that has been called out before the Lord. Even if you didn't hear it, the Lord heard it. Let us just pray now.
can praise God in his hour. He's always working. I said he's always working. chapter 7, and so today I'm in chapter 8 and wanting to touch on chapter 1. Wow. So don't be surprised if we go back to the beginning uh, sometime in the near future, perhaps as near as next Sunday. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1, I read, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right. Amen. 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 Without previous contrivance, I didn't wasn't thinking it was Independence Day on yesterday when I prepared this sermon. It's just divine coincidence right. that I want to talk about freedom in Christ. Right. Amen. 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 Freedom Amen. in Christ. Yes. Let me just throw this in before I get into the message that uh, it is a blessing that the church is a 
body with many members. And I say that because uh, so many of you are ministering to others throughout the course of the week. Uh, and uh, one person couldn't do it all. Amen. Amen. That's right. And, and, and Sister Latanya Davidson's fear for her mother this week, she mentioned how Sister Bailey ministered to her. Amen. And we praise the Lord for that. Amen. 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 So it's a blessing that you are ministering to each other. It's a family. Amen. It's a body. And we need one another. Amen. Freedom in Christ. One of the fundamental premises of humanity is freedom. A fundamental premise of humanity. Freedom is a human right for the mature. Babies are born free but must be educated in order to embrace that freedom. Parents rear their children not to forever be oppressed. Amen. No sane parent want their child to think like a child for 50 years. Right. Help me if you can. It's cute when they're babies and you got to put a bottle in their mouths and you have to pat them on the back to burp them and change diapers, but 20 years of that, too long. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's cute when they're babies, but, but that day stops being cute soon. Uh, you are rearing them to become self-sufficient and independent. Galatians 4 and 1 says that the heir, as long as he, he is a child, <clears throat> differs, no, differs none from a servant. That verse 2 of Galatians 4 says that the heir is under tutors and governors until the time appointed by the Father. Any education that does not liberate is a bad education. Any education that trains you into becoming more dependent is a bad education. Yeah. We train dogs, but we ought to educate people. Yeah. In circuses, they train animals, but we ought to educate people. Yeah. You, you do not educate a dog when you teach him how to sit. You will only educate a dog if he needed you to teach him how to bark. Barking is something a dog should do. Yeah. Sitting is something we want it to do. Yeah. Help me if you can. Yeah. And, and so when a system trains you to operate for their benefit, but not liberates you to operate as you were created, that's not educating, that's training. Yeah. In a religion, that does not liberate is a bad religion. Any right. culture that does not liberate is a toxic culture. We should be getting equipped and equipping others to live out their freedom. Amen. That goes back into us being the body of Christ that we are be ministering to each other as others are ministering to us. The Old Testament Mosaic Law was never given to the Israelites to enslave them. They were already slaves in Egypt. If God wanted them to be slaves, he just had, all he had to do was leave them there. He brought them out of slavery into freedom. The law was given to them to educate them so that they could get the oppressive mindsets that was indoctrinated in Egypt out of them rather than bringing an oppressive mindset from Egypt into Canaan. Oh, I wish you'd help me. Thou shalt not kill 
was really talking about Jew on Jew crime. Yeah. Help me today. Yeah. That, 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 too many of our people want to get angry when we talk about black on black violence. Right. It is not that we're suggesting that there is not white on white violence. But if you're going to say black lives matter, you got to say black lives matter no matter who pulls the pistol. And, and so when God said, thou shalt not kill, he was not prohibiting war. Right. For he told them on instances to go to war. Amen. And gave them the victory in war. He was saying, thou shalt not kill each other. Amen. African Americans, if we if we really want to come together and be the strong people that we are to be and ought to be, we have to fight any system that tears us down as a people, even if the one perpetuating the system looks like us. As a mature, free people, we must protect each other's interests. Selfish people only think about their own. And, and if you're that selfish, you're not mature enough to embrace freedom. But when you are mature, you look out for each other. Don't steal from each other was part of those Ten Commandments. Don't commit adultery with one another, one of your own people's spouses. In fact, don't even covet anything anybody that's one of your own people possesses. If it's theirs, don't want it. Help me somebody. These laws were designed to be moral codes for strong nation building. They were often, the, the Israelites were, they were often licentious with foreigners. Such as Samson with his uh, multiple exploits with the feminine gender. Such as Solomon, who the wisest king of Israel, his multiple wives and concubines, when he became old, they turned his heart from God. So the law was God's way of educating them on how not to have self-hatred. Right. But to protect each other's interests. It was not to enslave them, it was to liberate them. Right. If we could get that point, it would help us appreciate Christ to a whole nother level. That God is not the bad policeman always waiting on you to mess up so he can punish you. If that was God, God's job would always have something to do. Because because all of us are prone to mess up. And so if God was just sitting around looking for a chance to catch us in Rome, he would, he would find his job easy but always full. God is giving us instructions for our good not our oppression. Right. So Paul writes over half the New Testament and he writes this book of Romans as one who was nurtured in the law. Won't you say in the law? In the law. What made him a reputable Jew was his strict adherence to the law. Right. Yet in Philippians 3 and 8 he says I count all those things but loss for the excellency of Christ Jesus. Amen. What made him great was he kept the law. Yeah. You can read that in Philippians 3 where he talks about being circumcised on the eighth day and it's touching the law blameless and on and on he talks about how he kept the law and because he kept it uh, dotting every I and crossing every T he was a reputable Jew and he was put in the forefront to, to, to persecute those who stood against the, the traditional Judaistic religion. Mm -hmm. But he said, when I met Christ, yes. I realized what made me great amongst men 
was insignificant with God. That's right. And so I'd rather give up what made me great with men and become significant to God than be nothing to God and significant in the eyes of man. Right. Christ set him free. Mm -hmm. And I, I stand here today not just because Christ set Paul free. I stand here today because Christ has set us free. Yeah. But we must remember freedom begins in the mind. Yes. Yes. Chapter 7, verse 23. Paul says, there's another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Christ is always counter to systems of oppression. Right. Always counter to system of, systems of oppression. The concept of freedom is nestled throughout the gospel. But so is the concept of having your mind renewed. Right. You can't have one without the other. You can't have freedom without a renewal of mind. Right. Uh, that, 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 that late boxer, Hurricane, in the movie, it was played by Denzel Washington. And he actually was asked how did he survive being wrongfully in prison for so many years and he said he realized that even being behind bars, he had to make sure his mind was not locked up. Right. Right. Here's what I've discovered, there are many people who are not behind bars, but their minds are. Right. It's, 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 it's like a, a, a dog that's been on a, on a chain so long, you take him off the chain, and he still stays within the parameters of the chain. Because he's been there so long psychologically, he thinks he can't go any farther. It's, it's been said that if you take a, a fish out of a fish bowl that's been in a fish bowl so long and put him in the ocean, that fish will not swim further than the distance of the fish bowl because the mind has been conditioned that this is as far as I can go. And even when Christ sets you free, if your mind isn't free, you'll operate like a slave. You will be free or you'll be a prisoner with the doors wide open. So Paul says, this law wrestles with my mind. Paul opened this letter by saying that the just shall live by faith. That's Romans 1 and 17. And, and, and he wrote that following Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. So for a people who rejects faith in the gospel, God turned them over to a reprobate mind. Now this is why that, that Romans chapter 1 became so important to me because I, I definitely want to spend more time on it than I will this morning. But, but the punishment, the wrath of God was that he allowed them to do the self-destructive activities they really wanted to do. So you'll see in Romans 1 a whole list of self-destructive activities and many people will think God punished them for the self-destructive activities. But no, he didn't punish them for the self-destructive activities. The self-destructive activities were the punishment. You see, a nation that refuses to believe on God, God will soon say, okay, you reject me, then you have it your way. That's right. And then when we have it our way, we'll start destroying each other and thinking we're living it up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start killing each other and thinking we're exercising freedom, when in reality, our minds have been turned over to a reprobate mind, and God is just letting us destroy ourselves because we refuse to exercise faith in Him. So this letter is largely to a Gentile audience. Mm -hmm. Somebody here knows that's us. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul is saying, because my people would not believe, you are no longer at a disadvantage against them. Because they are saved by faith in the same gospel that you can be saved by. Right. They, they were given the very oracles of God and they didn't believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. God 
brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea and brought them through the wilderness into the land of Canaan. He kept them and provided for them and they still didn't believe. So I don't think you're at a disadvantage. You are at the same place they are. If you believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be as saved as they will be if they believe. Amen. Romans 3 and 9, Paul says, you do not need any circumcision. We are all under sin. None is righteous. We are justified by grace. Hallelujah. So Paul is therefore saying, it's difficult for me, he's saying, to even grasp this. Right. That every time I think grace through faith, yeah. the inclination to convert back to the law is comes alongside me. Amen. That, that whenever I start thinking that I'm righteous before God because of faith, mm -hmm. my old mindset takes me back to the law and I'm tempted to go back to the law. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is saying I'm, I'm writing this to you from Corinth mm -hmm. but I don't want you to think I've mastered this. I'm still wrestling with it myself. All right. He said I delight in this spiritual law of God but my mind wants to revert back to the law that only oppressed me. Yeah. And it oppressed me because we were taught to misuse it. That's right. We must by faith overcome the mental enslavement that has us thinking we have to perform for God to be pleased. Yeah. Oh, somebody should have shouted out. I mean, I really was expecting to say, calm down. We've got to break that chain that makes us feel like if I don't perform up to God's standard, He won't be pleased with me. God is pleased because he ain't looking at you. He's looking at his son's blood. Amen. So if you're going to be free, freedom begins in the mind. But not only does freedom begin in the mind, freedom barricades us from men's judgment. That's verse 1. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation. You see, even as I preach this, I do so aware that most of the people who are listening, whether it be here or on the in, on, on social media, mm -hmm. most of the people who will hear this are at best Christian Judaizers. Huh. All right. Christian Judaizers. They believe that you're saved by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, but yeah. you also have to carry out works of the flesh in order to stay saved. Yeah. And, and they feel like if, if, if Jesus' blood ain't enough to keep me, uh -huh. it's enough to get the process started, but I gotta work to please God uh -huh. in order for me to stay saved, which means I'm saved by his blood initially, but it's really just a down payment. Oh my God. I, I got to keep on making payments every day by living a certain way so I can stay saved, which means Jesus' blood really ain't enough. Mm. People who believe that a combination of grace and law required to please God are just Christian Judaizers. But Paul has made it repeatedly, emphatically clear that walking after the flesh is reverting back to the law so that you can please God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. The law causes us to try to please God in the flesh, but walking in the spirit is pleasing God through faith. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Yeah. I said bless his name. Yeah. That, that, that my faith in Jesus Christ is what pleases God. That when I'm totally, that's what that word faith means, total reliance, when I totally rely on Jesus Christ for my salvation, that's what pleases God. In Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It is by faith that I please God. Yeah. Now, this is not a faith that I'm trusting God for a car. Right. That's right. That, that has absolutely nothing to do with what the Bible is talking about with faith. That I believe in God, that, that I'm going to get my breakthrough, and I, no, it got nothing to do with none of that. It is faith 
Again, that word total reliance, mystero, is a Greek word, total reliance. It is, I am totally relying on Jesus Christ and his sacrificial atoning work to meet God's requirements for my righteousness. Yes. That I'm holy. Yeah. I'm holy not because I didn't smoke a cigarette yesterday. That's right. I'm righteous. I'm righteous not because I didn't go to the club. I'm holy. I'm righteous because God has imputed that. Yeah. He has charged it to my account because of my faith in Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, the law could do some stuff. But there were some things the law couldn't do. You see, through the law, God's expectations were expressed. What he expected. And so what man began to do is to see what God expected. And they tried to do what God expected. And then they would fall along the way regularly. So they needed a high priest to go into the Holy of Holies annually to pray and, 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 and intercede in behalf of them so that their sins would be forgiven. It, it expressed God's expectations, but not only did it express God's expectations, through the law, man's errors were exposed. What a way to live with a mirror always giving surveillance to you. Not just your actions, but your attitudes, your aim, your ambitions, so that you are always guilty. Mm -hmm. Do you realize, based on the, the, the thought process, there is absolutely no way you could ever stay right? That's right. Amen. I mean, it is impossible. You could be right here in church where you ought to be, hearing the word, what you want to hear. And somebody gets up and your mind says, I wish they said that. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing. As far as you know, your face, facial uh, reaction hadn't shown your thoughts. But now you have missed part of the sermon because your mind has been distracted by somebody else. Now your spirit has dropped and you might miss the rest of the sermon. Amen. And if we were under the law and the law kept us righteous, that would mean that if you died with that thought, you are going to hell. All right. All right. That's not everlasting life. Amen. That's not eternal salvation. That's not security of the believer. It means that I am permanently on probation. But, it, but, but the law... It, it, it expressed God's expectations. It exposed man's errors. But there's something the law could not do. And that is it could not execute righteousness beneath the external. Look at verse 4 with me. Verse 4, it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son, that's verse 3, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. And then verse 4 continues that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Hey. I said that. Not outside of us, but in us. Jesus says on Calvary, it is finished. And when he says it's finished, that means when I believe on the atoning work of Christ, the law is fulfilled in me. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God's spirit matures us so that we can live in freedom. God's spirit guides us. God's spirit spirit uh, renews our minds through the word. God's spirit shows us what we ought to be doing. There are some decisions we all have to make and there is no specific scripture to tell us what to do. Do, 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 do we have church at 1045 or do we move it to 930? Ain't no scripture to tell us that. Do I have a witness here? But, but, but God's spirit will lead us and, and God's spirit will guide us. God will lead us as 
to when we ought to make the next move and what the next move should be. And that's freedom that I don't have to follow the plan of somebody around the corner because what God is leading them to do may not be what he's leading me to do. Just because he said for them to go right doesn't mean it's time for me to go right. God may have some other specific instructions, but the thing I know is that if God is leading me, Christ will get the glory. Amen. So while our outward man perishes, our inward man mm -hmm. is renewed day by day. Christ does. Yeah. Bad news on every hand. But Christ renews us. Yeah. I, 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 I kid you not, I, and I, I said this Tuesday night, I believe it was, we are not naive, we are not burying our head heads in the sand, we just have a report that CNN and Fox News ain't giving. We, we have a message that we can't get on television watching the, the, the news 24-7. We know there's a God that watches over us and keeps us. And when this world is in a peace, in a place of panic, we can still be in a place of peace. But Christ does that. He says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Yeah. He, he says in that same chapter, John chapter 8, and if the Son makes you free, yeah. you shall be free indeed. Amen. I, I, I didn't look that word up indeed in the Greek, but I just got a feeling that a, a synonym for that word could be you're going to be free big time. Yeah. Or you're going to be free shown up. Yeah. That, that, that you're not partially free, you are free shown up. I'm free, show up. I'm not in freedom parole. I'm free for real. For real, for real. I, I don't have something on my ankle saying I'm free to move around within certain parameters. No, I don't have to wear that on my ankle. I'm free for real. Hey, I said hey. And when the sun has set you free, you are not walking around like you're bound. You are For sure, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master yeah. of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters, he lifted me, safe and alive. Love lifted me. I don't know about you, but I found a love.
found the love that's in that part. And you found some stripes that heal. And if you know it's in Jesus, how dare you just give him some praise? Mr. Crenshaw, would you come and sing some of that for us? It's in Jesus, and while she comes, the privilege of the church is extended. The doors of the church are open. To any person that may be here or elsewhere, but under the sound of my voice, who wants this freedom that comes only in Jesus Christ. The privilege is extended. The doors of the church are open. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ can, will, and wants to save you quicker than right now and sooner than at once. And he will save you not because you've been so good. He'll save you because he's that good. Yeah. If you just believe the gospel, yeah. Jesus Christ will erase your yesterdays and emancipate you into a new today and a new tomorrow. If there's one, won't you come?
future life that tries to convert you, tell them, look, I ain't trying to argue with you. You just talking about life before Jesus. I'm talking about life since Jesus. Christ has set me free. Amen. Who the Son has set free is free shown them. It's free indeed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Deacons. As you remain standing, if there's any person who does not have your bread or cup, would you raise your hand? There are some hands, Brother Deacons. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 